On a rainy Memorial Day afternoon, Bob Barsha and David Bailey with you for the first of two rounds of 250cc National Championship Motocross action. Here's the phenomenon of the sport thus far. Four-time Supercross champion and reigning 250 outdoor titleist Jeremy McGrath going for his seventh and eighth straight moto victories and fourth straight overall here today. Here's a look at Phil Lawrence. He's looking behind him. You can see a dozer working on the track back there. They're trying to smooth out some of those ruts, I think. And then you can see the rain coming down now, Bob, so the track's going to be getting a lot slicker. It's still pretty hard packed. It won't get real muddy, but it will get slicker as the day continues. I think it's muddier now than ever as the rain continues to fall. In fact, it's probably falling harder than it has all day. Morocco's not had the season he would like to have had. The switch to Suzuki, uh, we've already pointed out before that he came into the season uh, off a serious knee surgery and starting to get it back together. He hasn't had good starts in the outdoors so far, but he's been going fast. So I would look for him to get uh, decent starts here today and really be a factor. Mike LaRocco injured, did not ride this race a year ago, so the track will in many ways be a bit unfamiliar to him. That's a good look at Brian Swank and how technical this sport has become. That's a carbon fiber helmet, $700 worth. Here's a look at our standings coming into this race. Jeremy McGrath, perfect so far this year, 150 points. We're getting used to seeing that with the Showtime phenomenon. Jeff Emig in second place is the man who stopped McGrath's winning streak in Supercross at 13 straight events. He'll be hoping to end another streak here today in the outdoor. On bike number one is McGrath. The gate is down and we are away. McGrath with a good start on the red Honda. He gets pushed wide. Number 16, Greg Albertine. Mike Jones is a local, number 49, a privateer. But Albertine just muscled his way around Jeremy. Kind of pushed him so wide, he allowed Mike Jones to sneak into second. There's a good look at Jones from Export, Pennsylvania. And up front, the eminently qualified three-time world champion, Greg Albertine, still kind of struggling to come to terms with American-style outdoor motocross. Well, he makes little mistakes. He just made a little one right there. He didn't lose any time, but uh, the guy is fast. You know, I, I, I'm going to sound like a broken record here, Bob, because I've said it a million times. He's fast enough to win, but he can't keep it upright. So uh, today is another opportunity for him. It was a great start to see if he can lead it to the final lap of this race and hold off McGrath. Tough for anybody to be compared to McGrath these days, but Albertine has had two second-place photo finishes behind Showtime this year. Right now, he's drawing away from Jones, McGrath, and the rest of the field. The track's still in pretty good shape right now. Although that rain's falling, they've done a good job of, uh, with the layout. The rain can't sit anywhere on the racetrack. There's so many hills, the rain uh, runs off and stays in pretty good shape. There's a few shiny spots out there where it's slick. If you avoid those, you'll be all right. There you see that McGrath has moved into second place. Davey Coombs is standing by with Skip Norfolk, his mechanic. Here we go again. Abby gets the lead from Jeremy right off the start and takes off. Same script? Well, I don't know. I think, um, you know, he's trying to feel anything out. It's raining a little bit. It's hard pack underneath. It's kind of slimy. As long as nobody's coming from behind to pressure him, I think he just may stay there and feel things out for a couple laps just to, just to kind of see what it's going to do. And it's kind of hard to say. I mean, if the sky's open, it's going to change everything. And if it dries out, then we're just going to have great racing. But it, it's real early in the race. and. It's kind of early, and we know what happened a couple weeks ago, and just kind of hope for the best. <laughs> well, that's just Skip being nice uh, with Albertine. What he's referring to is a couple weeks ago at Glen Helen, Albertine passed Jeremy, led the race till the final couple of laps, and crashed. So uh, basically, just be smart right here and let Albertine set the pace. And once you get comfortable, if he hasn't fallen already, just then try to make a pass. Watch the battle right there between 23, Brian Swink, and 15, Doug Henry. Morocco starting to sneak in there as well. This is where Doug Henry won his first 250 national outdoors. Foot slipped off the peg right there, coming around that sweeper. That's the outside peg where you want to apply that pressure. It didn't matter, though. He still passed everybody. 49, Michael Jones hanging in there, about to be swamped by the factory hot shoes. And he gets squeezed over against the edge of the racetrack for everybody to come riding right by him. This is for third place. Doug Henry now has it. Swink moves into fourth place. Jones drops to fifth after a tremendous start. Of course, he does a lot of riding here, knows the track well, as you watch Brian Swink. You see how tough it is for these guys to get down the hill. Emig's starting to get into the picture now in the bright green. 
so hard to make that inside at the bottom. And on the 250, you can still take the inside and get over that double. Look at Mike LaRocco on number eight coming up the inside, powering past Jones, now attacking Swink. LaRocco is on the move, looking for his first overall of the year. Now he's in a hurry. He fought that bike all the way down the hill. It's not the bike's handling uh, really that's bad. It's just that he picked a line that was extremely rough. And the only guy that can do that, really, and make it work is LaRocco. He's so strong. He'll shine on a track like this today. And the worse the conditions get, the faster he's going to go. That's LaRocco's reputation. A great outdoor specialist and very, very strong. Very experienced now as well. Rocketing up the hill. That was a pretty wild exchange. Swink stuck his foot way up in the air because he knew LaRocco was coming in. Didn't want to get his leg run over. Then LaRocco hit that jump coming up the hill and got completely out of control and still saved it. Great action early on in Moto 1 as Greg Albertine, the world champ, leads America's champ. Jeremy McGrath will be right back. Welcome back to High Point Raceway in Mount Morris, Pennsylvania. Bob Barsha and David Bailey with you. Moto 1 action in the 250 National Motocross Championship. There you see Larry Ward with a towel flying off his right hip as he passes Michael Jones, who had a great start in this 250 Moto 1 and has been working his way back through the top 10 since. Larry Ward's been riding pretty good, too, lately, and the towel's just because of the muddy conditions. If it gets a lot worse and you get mud on your hands or on your goggles or whatever, you can, it may come in handy later on. Back up to the battle for third place. Ward now moving up on Brian Swink, number 23, who in turn is chasing Mike LaRocco. With Doug Henry. LaRocco comes down, and look at Larry Ward come flying around that corner using the wide line. Well, that's that big sweeper that uh, where the start comes in, and it's tough to pick a line. You can go fast around the outside, but then you give up all that space coming into that tough right-hander where Emick made that time back up on Larry. Ward and Swink behind them. Jeff Emick, whom you just saw on that bright green Kawasaki, charging down the hill. Now Swink goes wide. Emick will close up a few bike lengths on him. Swink went way wide looking for some dry dirt to get some traction on and that's such an off-camber corner you, I mean you can go like 40 feet longer distance but if you find some place where you can get down there and be aggressive uh, you can make all that time back up it didn't pay off for Swink he almost got passed by Emmett we can't overstate how rough and rutted this track has gotten an amateur event preceding the pro events featuring a thousand riders has really churned up this course and of course the 125s race here as well as the 250 stars. Larry Ward dancing around quite a bit coming down that downhill. Wasn't able to do that double jump right there. Swink and Emig over it clean. They'll make up some time. You see all the mud flying. That's flying in their face as well. So vision is really important, especially back here in a battle like this. If Emig can't get around these two very quick, well, he disposes of Swink. That's the same place Swink got passed by LaRocco. Uh, I was about to say, if he can't get around him, he'll be chasing all that mud, and he'll run out of vision before the end of the race. You can bet that stuff stings at top speed. Well, it's coming off the rear wheel. The bike in front of him is 70 or 80 miles an hour, and you're charging 40 or 50 into it. And uh, that's why these guys wear chest protectors. It hurts. Doug Henry running in third place with a piece of racetrack all his own right now. The battle between Greg Albertine, the race leader, and Jeremy McGrath in second place, well out in front of him. And Mike LaRocco at this point a good ways behind. Henry uh, probably going to be forced to think about LaRocco here in pretty quick because LaRocco's been catching him steadily. And uh, it's a long ways up to McGrath from Doug Henry. So it's, it's tough to keep your focus forward when there's no one there. He continues to string out. Henry, as we mentioned, picked up his first 250 national overall here one year ago. Mike LaRocco now closing up on him. Henry coming in off his best performance of the year thus far, a fifth in the most recent round at Glen Helen Park in California. This is where Doug really started getting things rolling last year, uh, coming off of a couple of good heat races in Supercross, beating McGrath, and then uh, we're picking up his first overall win here. It looks like this year he's starting to do the same thing. Heading down into the woods, LaRocco pulls up behind Henry. Can he get him? Yeah, well, briefly, he had a shot at him, and then he powers by. So Mike LaRocco moves up into third spot. Down in the mechanics area, his engine tuner and father is with Davey. Your boys moved into third. It's set up for him to go after McGrath and Albertine. How bad does he need this moto win? He needs this moto win really bad for his confidence and for Suzuki's confidence. Uh, 
I think we're in a position we can still get it. We're only about eight, nine seconds back. We got plenty of time. Well, he doesn't need a lot of time because Mike Morocco has already closed up onto the rear wheel of Jeremy McGrath for second place. Crowd really enjoying it, too. It's not that often that they get to see Jeremy really having to fight for a position. And uh, he's in a Suzuki sandwich right now. Albertine out front, LaRocco coming up from behind. And uh, as Mike's dad pointed out, Mike doesn't only need this win for his own confidence, but for the team. If, if Team Suzuki can pull off uh, an upset here, I guess you could call it, by going 1-2, uh, really boost the whole team and uh, prove to everyone that the bike is capable of winning and uh, that, that does a lot for the riders confidence no question about it Honda has been at the top of the heat for a long time same for McGrath right now Mike LaRocco is after him it's Albertine McGrath and LaRocco we've got more action coming up stand by for more from Mount Morris Pennsylvania brought to you by Suzuki Right now, your Suzuki dealer has the ride you've been waiting for and the financing to get it. Back at High Point Raceway, Mike LaRocco, bike number eight, is on a charge, powering past reigning national champ Jeremy McGrath for second. Look at Jeremy. He just kind of had to cruise into the corner. He knew he had been passed. Nothing much he could do to counter that. Now he's just got to stick with LaRocco. Caught him quick and see if he can figure out where he's going faster and maybe get him back. There's still time enough. Meanwhile, everybody chasing Greg Alpertine up front. Listen to the cheers go up for Mike LaRocco. Crowd really getting into this. I pointed out already, it's not often they see a challenge. It's even less often than that. You see Jeremy get past. Uh, and LaRocco caught him quick. And look, he's already starting to pull away a little bit. So. Crowd right. seeing something fairly unusual today. During the Supercross season just passed. Even if Jeremy McGrath was challenged, that made news. Won moto after moto, overall after overall, 13 straight before being beaten by Jeff Emig at St. Louis. He went on to claim his fourth straight Supercross championship, something no other rider has ever done. Last year he proved himself. It was always said that he was a great Supercross rider but lacked something in the National Motocross 250s. So he came out and won that national championship. Right now, Jeremy McGrath finds himself in third place here at Mount Morris and without any disrespect at all the crowd is loving it and Jeremy's not hooking up as good as LaRocco I think it's a little bit to do with lines LaRocco over that triple clean back on the gas and you notice Mike's using that loam he's, he's not in that hard slick stuff where Jeremy is Jeremy's trying to to uh, use a little bit too much finesse out there on that hard slick stuff and he's just not getting hooked up coming out of the corners in the back section uh, before they came up around to the finish line, I noticed that Jeremy came out of two of those corners and just left a big skid mark on the ground. So he's just getting wheel spin everywhere. And, and uh, now Doug Henry's starting to catch up. Absolutely. Henry, the former Honda rider, now with Yamaha, closing up for third place behind McGrath. Going to give the crowd something to cheer about again. Uh, just when the battle was starting to uh, shape up between Jeremy and LaRocco, LaRocco finished it. Looked like it was going to be over, but now... Henry seems to uh, have a lot faster pace right now than Jeremy, so. Well, what an athletic exercise, watching these guys soak up the bumps with their legs and their backs and their arms. Doug Henry's mechanic, reminding him about speed in the corners. All right, this is what I was just kind of pointing out with Jeremy, that's where he's losing his time, and uh, if Doug can keep his speed up through the corners, that's probably where he'll be able to make a pass or, or just on the exit carrying more speed making up huge ground on those jumps as well and you notice the green Kawasaki of Jeff Emig coming up behind but right now Jeremy McGrath has all he can handle with Doug Henry and Henry is around for third place dropping the reigning champ to fourth whatever his mechanic Pete Steinbrecher told Doug Henry it certainly worked let's see if Davey Combs can learn more about Henry's situation we see a huge smile on your face. It's the first time during the comeback, at least outdoors, that Henry's ridden like this, and he just passed McGrath. How do you think Doug's feeling? Well, Doug, I know he's getting tired, but uh, you guys have seen it in the past that uh, Doug never gives up. And uh, if you guys see him get passed, I know he's just a lot of energy, but he's going to put everything he's got into it right now. Well, we can see that by that triple jump move there. That's a Praje. He jumped it right next to McGrath. Yeah, I saw him do that in practice. And I guess 
him and Jeremy are, I think, uh, pretty good buddies, and maybe he knows that Jeremy's, a little, I guess, a little bit straighter of the jumps that wouldn't take him out. The Pete Steinbrecher raises an interesting issue, getting tired, as you see McGrath now coming under fire from Jeff Emick. The top riders have been riding 19 of the last 20 weekends. I mean, racing 19 of the last 20 weekends. They have a two-week break coming up after this event. A lot of these guys might be a little road-weary. Well, yeah, it's difficult, too, to stay in, in top peak condition uh, because today you're looking at a situation where it's raining and kind of cold. In between motos, you catch a chill. Then the next weekend, or the last national, for instance, was in the hundreds. So it's very difficult to maintain a, a peak physical level throughout the season. You can bet they're all looking forward to the break. We're going to take a break, but before we do, here's this week's Dunlop trivia question. Here are the nicknames. Who are the riders? The Jammer, Flying Freckle, the Bomber, and Too Tall. We'll have the answers when we return. I have a question about that. Obviously, in the case of Flying Freckle and Too Tall, it has to do with physical appearance. How did Jim Weiner become known as the Jammer and Mark Barnett as the Bomber? Well, I think for Barnett, it was just like dropping a bomb on the com competition. In the early 80s, he won just about every moto in the 125 National Championship, just destroyed him. And uh, for Jim Weiner, I don't know. That should have probably been the Joker. He was the master of the pra practical jokes and uh, uh, also pretty good at trash talk. No talking right now. A lot of huffing and puffing on the racetrack as you watch the numbers three, four, and five bikes. And the fifth one in line, the green Kawasaki of Jeff Emick, comes right alongside the red Honda of Jeremy McGrath. Doug Henry on the blue Yamaha, number 15, runs in third. It's ruts in the faces of all those jumps coming down the straightaway, and it looked like Emick had a run on Jeremy, and then uh, got stuck in the ruts. There he comes again. And Emick gets by, however briefly. Now it looks like he's knocked it down. Fourth place for Emig, dropping the national champ back to fifth. Oh, I can't remember the last time, if there even was a time, when Jeremy dropped this many positions. Uh, something's just not quite right with his bike setup, or he just isn't getting uh, the proper lines. He, something's not coming together for Jeremy. Very, very odd that you would see him drop that many positions, or even that easily, really. It's usually a fight, but uh, once... Emick positioned himself to the inside. He just reached up, pulled the tear away as if to say, well, you got me. I'll just come back to the second mode and kick your butt. See Emick sticking to the rider's left side of the track. McGrath way over on the rider's right. Scrambling for grip, trying to get a smoother ride, pick up some speed. McGrath just does not look quick, particularly through that part. Nope, and uh, he reached up once again to try to clear his vision. So vision could be a problem for him, and we just don't know it. Emig looking good. Earlier this season, we asked him about his memories of Mount Morris. Here's what he told us. My history is at Mount Morris. You know, in the past races, I've had, you know, anywhere from a mediocre to winning both motos to knocking myself out and not even finishing. And that was the year that I won my 135 National Championship. You know, so I've had really great races, and I've had some really bad races there. But um, I think that this is one of those years when I'm, you know, when I'm back on the upswing. So... Uh, you know, so hopefully I'll be able to, you know, you know pull off uh, some moto wins and gain some points back, you know, towards that uh, 250 National uh, Championship. Well, Jeff Emick doing exactly that. He came into this weekend second in points behind Jeremy McGrath, and he is marching his way through the order. He is now up to third place behind the Suzuki teammates Greg Albertine and Mike LaRocco. I think there's probably not enough time for him to go up and catch those two guys out front, but it is important for him to stay as far ahead of Jeremy as he can and put as many riders between himself and Jeremy to pick up all the points he can pick up. Uh, that's going to be in addition to the confidence booster it's got to be for him to move around Jeremy. That's LaRocco's mom. LaRocco's starting to move in on uh, the leader now, so she's perhaps anticipating a moto win finally. The LaRocco family makes motocross a family sport, and they have for a long time. Mike on his new Suzuki ride, closing up now on his teammate. There's Greg Albertine. Rocco not far behind at all. It wasn't long ago when he won as many outdoor races as Jeremy wins and uh, starting to look like Mike LaRocco again. Charging from, I guess, about as far back as sixth place at one time. He passed everybody, earned the spot. Now he's really starting to gain on Albertine, and there's time enough for him to pass him for the lead. We are getting into the later laps. Fatigue, a possible factor. There you see him taking that jump in great style. Going by, was that a slower rider? Yes, it was. There's Albertine on number 16, still out in front as they plunge downhill. You can hear the crowd starting to get into it, too. They want to see a battle as well. They're waving on LaRocco. 
None of the more so than the man who runs Suzuki's motocross team, the legendary Roger DeCosta is with Davey. Every time it seems like we talk to Greg Albert, Jesus mechanic, Ian, something bad happens to Greg, so we're not even going to talk to him. We just thought we'd talk to you. Is Greg feeling like he's really comfortable today? Yeah, actually, both uh, Greg and, and Mike were feeling happy about the track on, or already on Friday, and Greg's attitude was that he was here to win today, and, uh, and Mike, uh, I saw Mike smile a lot, which doesn't happen much, many times at the races, especially lately. So he, he was feeling good, and he was happy with his bike, too. One last question. Which of these two guys needs this win more, Albertino or Larocco? That's a hat. <laughs> That's hard to say because they both need it very much, and uh, and I need it as much as they do. Well, for Roger, it's probably like a little flashback. Back when I was riding with Honda, Roger was there, and there were times when they were out front, one, two, three, and uh, it's got to feel good again. Suzuki running one, two at the moment. Albertine and Larocco will be right back for more of the 250 National Championship from Mount Morris, Pennsylvania. AMA Motocross on ESPN2 is being brought to you by Splitfire. Enter the performance zone. Splitfire Performance B Spark Plug. In the late stages of 250 Moto 1 at High Point Raceway in Mount Morris, Pennsylvania, Bob Barsha and David Bailey with you as Greg Albertine heads into his final lap in the lead. I think the difference here for Albertine is that. He's been in the lead before, but he's never been in the lead and not had Jeremy breathing down his neck. So now he looks back and sees his teammate. That's got to help him relax quite a bit. I wonder how Skip Norfolk and Jeremy McGrath feel. Their strategy, which we heard early on, was to wait until Albertine blew up, basically. But it hasn't happened. He's been steady and out front since the beginning of this moto. It's very rare they would hear Skip Norfolk or Jeremy, especially Skip, though, talk about waiting. Uh, you know, they ride with a lot of patience. They've got the confidence to do that, but uh, usually they just go for it, and that's what happens when you don't. Passing slower riders, that shows you something about how fast Greg Albertine is riding. His track about a mile round, and he has been lapping slower riders for some time now. He's got a pretty nice flow right now, too. He's kind of standing up. Doesn't look like he's trying that hard, and that's usually a symbol of... Uh, having everything going your way. He's able to reach up, clear his vision, jump over all the bad holes. Right there, he doesn't catch his foot in the ground very much. He's just gliding around the racetrack, making it look easy. He's still got to charge a little bit because LaRocco's there, but he knows he's close enough to the finish line now to take it home. A little bit of a fist pump there for the huge crowd gathered here at High Point Raceway. More than 20,000 motocross fans watching their heroes in action and some decidedly compromising conditions rain continues to fall albertine up out of the saddle taking those jumps in style greg albertine from south africa picks up the moto one victory here at mount morris fists in the air as he passes the suzuki service vehicle there's james dobb an englishman giving his south african teammate a hug he rides in the 125 series for suzuki here are our moto one results albertine in morocco with a suzuki one two then emig henry and jeremy mcgrath Ryan Swink got a good start, but faded to sixth, followed by Phil Lawrence, Kyle Lewis, Cliff Palmer, and Larry Ward. Here's Davey Coombs with our happy Moto One winner. It's about time. It's way overdue. You know, I paid my dues. I worked really hard for two years, and I just want to give Jesus Christ all the glory because he's been through me, with me through all the hard times and the good times, you know, and I've been working really hard, and everything's finally come together. And I have so many people to thank, you know, Gary Bailey, Joe, my trainer, Ian Harrison, my fantastic mechanic, my RM250 is running great. All my sponsors, you know, BFE, Oakley, No Fear, really appreciate it. Well, but someone hasn't been in the winner's circle for a long time, you sure have the rapport down. Trust me, I've memorized it so many times, and so many times I've been disappointed, and I know it by heart. I know it's only one moto win, but how good does it feel? It feels so good, you know, I've been waiting for this for so long just to get my confidence up, and I think it's going to be a snowball effect from now, and I'm back. All right, we'll see you in the next moto. Thanks, man. Congratulations. Thanks, Dave. Congratulations indeed to Greg Albertine. Here's a look at Mike LaRocco, whom we thought had a shot at his Suzuki teammate, but he finishes second. He's with Davey. You and your teammate Greg Albertine. I know that we talked to Roger DeCosta during the moto, and he said both of you guys needed that win, but second, is that too good for your confidence? Well, yeah, if I win the second moto, or if I win the second round, but actually I felt pretty good out there. My Suzuki's working real good now, and uh, I felt good. I think I'd take a second moto. Yeah. <clears throat> we noticed on the triple jump here, you waited a few laps before you started to jump that, and you're making time the whole moto on that. Was that something you had planned earlier? No, it's just with the rain, everything's a little slick, and uh, the first half of the race, I were a little bit tentative, and 
you know, I started getting a groove and felt good, so I went for it. And right, finally, how do you feel about your teammate Greg Albertine finally getting a national moto win here in America? Uh, I'm, I'm happy for him. I'm glad any, actually anything but a Honda win. So. <laughs> <laughs> and you think these commercial ties don't run deep. We'll be right back with more from Mount Morris, Pennsylvania. Moto 2 coming up. It's being completed. We are just moments away from the start of the second moto at the 250 National Motocross Championship. Back at High Point Raceway in Mount Morris, Pennsylvania, ready for the second moto in 250 competition of the AMA National Championships. I'm Bob Barsha, along with David Bailey. A lot of action in that first moto, particularly strong performance by the former world champ, Greg Albertine. Well, I'm not surprised by how fast he's going, but I am surprised he kept it on two wheels. This proves what he can do when he doesn't crash. Now, how about Jeremy McGrath, the reigning champ? We haven't seen him back in fifth in a moto in a long time. I know, not since last year here. And, uh, you know, I just don't think Jeremy does well in this kind of condition. It's kind of slick like this. He wasn't hooking up out there and uh, really paid the price. Good race for Mike LaRocco, who's been through some tough times recently as well. The conditions are not expected to improve. Let's get down to the starting line now for Moto2 of the 250s. Skip Norfolk, mechanic for Jeremy McGrath. Some final comments to his rider. You know, Bob, it's very rare to see Jeremy have two bad motos in a row or two bad races in a row. I would look for him to come out swinging. You can see over these guys' shoulder, the rain is really starting to come down hard. And LaRocco... Uh, he's got to be sitting in the pits thinking, I'm the fastest rider on the track. I caught the leader from really far back. Emig also had a pretty good pace moving around, Jeremy. So uh, there's a lot of guys that could be up front in this race. But to get up front, they'll have to get a good start. In these conditions, you don't want to wait, as Jeremy McGrath found out in Moto1. The gate is down. We are away. Doug Henry on number 15. The field funneling into turn number one. Jeremy McGrath with a great start. There you see him on the red number one bike and he's got all of the early leaders from moto one right there with him all the contenders have gotten great starts emig looked like he had the whole shot and jeremy rode right around the outside of him now here comes emig riding that back wheel number two jeff emig takes the lead doug henry right there he too goes around jeremy mcgrath who bobbled coming down the hill and michael rocco on the wide line looking for a way past as well also, it looked like Albertine hugged that inside, made it slip into the four spots. The two Suzuki teammates, first and second in the first moto, are right there within striking distance of the lead. In the 125 event that preceded this 250 national championship race, Kevin Windham rode consistently through two motos and picked up the overall. No one from the top five able to repeat in the second moto. Right now, all of our Moto One top finishers in the 250 class are right there behind race leader Jeff Emig. Doug Henry can just smell an overall win. This is where he got his first one last year. Right now, he's looking at the lead. If he can pick it up, depending on how these guys finish behind him, he could mathematically win the overall. And look at Jeremy McGrath back in fifth place once again. Honda Troy with good starts. Swank and Larry Ward still up there. But Amig, you can see he's already reaching up to clear his vision. He's out front. So what happens is all that mud comes off your front tire, it goes up, and you run into your own roost. Emig and Doug Henry both going for their goggles either for tear offs or rip away a new shield to clear their vision as they plunge down into the forest. Boy, it's slow down in that corner. Well, it's extremely technical section on the racetrack. It's, there's a lot of roots from those trees, and when they get wet, it's just like trying to ride over slippery pipes. You don't get any traction. And Henry got a little sideways, held up everybody. Jeff Emig consolidating his lead. It's an exciting racetrack the way the layout is because the spectators are all up in the middle and all the riders disappear for a moment as they go into the back section and really lends to the anticipation as they reappear. There's Mike LaRocco charging back to the front. Our Honda field summary has only one Honda on it. Jeremy McGrath in fifth place. Jeff Emig leads. We'll be back to Mount Morris. Welcome back to High Point Raceway in Mount Morris, Pennsylvania. Racetrack celebrating its 20th anniversary on a piece of farmland owned by the Holbert family, a name familiar to sports car fans around the country. Bob Holbert, one of the great racers of the 50s and 60s, and his son, the late Al Holbert, a five-time IMSA Camel GT champion. You looked at Doug Henry right there. But this skirmish between Mike LaRocco and his Suzuki teammate Greg Albertine, first and second place finishers in the first moto, and no quarter given. Well, DeCoster 
got two guys finally with a, a chance at the overall win. And the way it sits right now, Emig would pick it up with a third in the first moto leading right here. So uh, he needs these guys to get around. If they got to get in and be physical and rub elbows with each other to get motivated, then so be it. But get up to the front because you got two chances. And if you throw it away here today, I don't know when you're going to get it again. They run third and fourth. The Suzuki team looks on. Morocco, number eight. Albertine, number 16. Doug Henry just ahead. Jeremy McGrath just behind. So everybody just riding right around McGrath, the same as they did in the first moto. He had the whole shot. Emmett got around him right in this section. And then Doug Henry, and now the Suzuki guys really starting to pour it on. Morocco goes by Henry for second. Can Henry respond? Oh, and Albertine is down. Looks but like Albertine tried to go for both those guys on the inside, paid the price. We'll see just to the very, very right of the screen. Albertine looked like he had the pass on both of them, or at least was going for it, but it's even more off camera right there against the uh, grass. No traction at all, and bike just slipped out from underneath him. Jeremy McGrath and Larry Ward got by. There is Doug Henry with McGrath just behind him. McGrath now up to fourth with Albertine's fall. Doug Henry in third. So now in the mechanics area, the Suzuki guys are doing their math. Probably that's going to take Albertine out of the equation for the overall win. So now if they can just keep Mike LaRocco on the gas and charging after Emig, not let these guys around, then Suzuki could win here today. McGrath looked up the inside, couldn't get it done, dives behind Henry, then goes up the inside in this corner and takes away third place. So McGrath on a charge. When we talked with him earlier this season about coming to Mount Morris, he put it all in perspective. High Point Raceway is a place where you have to put two good motos together to have any chance at all. Mount Morris, for me, has had its ups and downs. Uh, I've won motos there, and I've crashed motos there, and I actually broke my leg there in 91. So, I mean, it's, it's a great track. I love it, but... Uh, Sometimes, you know, it's not, it doesn't go all my way. And uh, last year, I had a moto win, but I think I crashed four times in the first moto. So, I mean, hopefully this year, when I go there, I can put two motos together and hopefully come out with a win. Well, Jeremy McGrath has certainly left himself with some work to do after a fifth place finish in moto one. He is up to third spot right now behind the man on the right, right there, number eight, Mike LaRocco. Jeremy doing a beautiful job of getting over that triple jump. He came out of that corner before it on the inside and still hugged the inside after the triple. So he's starting to get his lines together, ride a little bit better, and he's caught these guys. That's going to give him a little confidence and make these guys nervous. Jeff Emick, the race leader on the Kawasaki number two. Lower rider getting out of the way to let the leaders through. Emick, LaRocco, and McGrath, nose to tail. This huge crowd's going to get their money's worth now, I can tell you that. These guys are going to fight for it, that's for sure. All three of these guys with a shot at the overall, but McGrath has to get ahead of them and get some help from slower riders or perhaps someone else. Moving up from behind, contact, and Emig is off the course. Wow, Morocco got in there and just punted Emig. It looked like Emig grabbed a handful of gas. And see if we get another look. Yeah, Emig grabbed a handful of throttle. That caught him by surprise. He didn't expect to see Morocco coming up the inside. He was already on the inside, but Morocco did a good job to set that up and. Now here comes Jeremy. Two-way battle for the lead between LaRocco and McGrath. You see Emig held on to third place. Fortunately, didn't get tangled in that tape along the edge of the course. And now McGrath gets a little bit wide and LaRocco able to pull away. I can tell you this, Emig is not finished with LaRocco. You go and do that stuff to Emig and you're going to have to pay. So if he can catch back up to him, there's going to be some fireworks. Well, getting back to what I said a moment ago, this is what Jeremy McGrath needed, but he needed Emick to drop further back in the top five. Right now, he's got LaRocco ahead of him and Emick behind him. And now he has LaRocco behind him. Jeremy got a strong drive out of the corner at the bottom of the hill and just shifted up a gear, made the move on LaRocco. That's where he was losing time in the first moto. Coming out of all those corners, he was getting a lot of wheel spin. He made some changes to the motorcycle, probably, maybe a tire, or else Jeremy just changed his lines, but it's working now. Jeremy McGrath out front, and if you'd like more about how to get the most out of your motorcycle, here's Jeremy McGrath's mechanic, Skip Norfolk, with a Honda riding tip. Setting up your suspension is, without a doubt, the most difficult and the most important part of racing. At American Honda, that's one thing we try to improve week in and week out, is our suspension setting. The owner's manual provides you with 
all kinds of information. There's a whole chapter set aside under suspension settings. You need to sit down and read that chapter because it, it'll provide you with what change you make to your shock and it gives you a result. You need to read that and learn what changes give you what result. Then you need to take that to your practice track. You need to go out and make some changes, write down the results so you know what those results are. That way when you get to a racetrack, the bike's doing something a little funny, you go back to your notes, you go back to your owner's manual, you go, wow, you change it here, you change it there, you've improved your bike setting, your results are going to improve, your confidence is going to be up, and hopefully you'll get the for win that you've been looking for. For Honda 1-800 Collect Fox Racing, I'm Skip Norfolk. All right, thank you, Skip. On the racetrack, his man Jeremy McGrath leads. There's Mike Morocco, who bumped his way past then-race leader Jeff Emick before being passed by McGrath. But Jeremy still needs help. If Morocco stays where he is, he has the advantage for the overall. The way it looked for Jeremy right now, though, isn't too bad. Winning the second moto kind of put an exclamation on things. If he can hang on to it, he wouldn't lose that many points to Emig, his nearest competitor for the title. But uh, LaRocca really made things easier for him, though, when he got Emig out of the way. Now Jeremy doesn't have to pass him. It's kind of ironic that Mike LaRocca, who is not the best friend of either Jeremy McGrath or Honda, may be helping Jeremy McGrath consolidate his lead in the points. He runs second to McGrath with Emig third. We'll be back to Pennsylvania. In our Suzuki flashback, we'll jump in our time machine and take you back to 1988, right here at Mount Morris. A couple of riders getting stuck in the starting gate, but it was Fred Andrews, number 18, the privateer Suzuki, who grabbed the early lead, followed by Rick Johnson. And Rick was on the charge, wearing all white to beat the heat. He would square off Fred Andrews and take over the lead, and that's where he would stay for most of the day. The Kawasaki's number four, Ron Lachine, would trade motos with his teammate Jeff Ward, but it was Ron Lachine getting the edge in the second moto, picking up second overall. Jeff Ward with his homemade Bennett jersey, pick up third overall, but he'd go on to win the title. Rick Johnson won the overall here at Mount Morris, but a DNF during the 88 season cost him the title. He didn't win the war, but he won the battle. Right here he shares the podium with the 125 race winner, Guy Cooper. All a part of the 20-year history of AMA National Motocross Racing here, High Point Raceway, Mount Morris, Pennsylvania. Doug Henry on his Yamaha battles the yellow Suzuki of Greg Albertine. This is for fourth place, and it's a very important position for Albertine. This is the one he must have if he is to take his first national overall. And right now, he's got it. As he came up the hill, he was out wide and set up... Henry perfect. There's Henry's mechanics saying, look ahead. Forget about Albertine. What he's going to find out as they pop back into view is that if he looks ahead, he's going to find the guy that uh, he didn't want to get around. So Henry's looking good, but a few guys looking a little bit better. Albertine has already left him. You see him just up around the corner. Meanwhile, this is LaRocco and Albertine now fighting over third. And Albertine, very quick in that corner, getting the front wheel up in the air. Sharp left-hander as he consolidates third place from his teammate, LaRocco. He almost gave it back by dropping out wide there again, but got in a little battle. He was going to let off first, and it was LaRocco who had to. You can bet Suzuki team manager Roger DeCosta is watching this battle with some interest. Definitely, and this is the part that scares me about Albertine. As he came into that corner just back to that right-hander, his front end washed out, and then he made a little bobble there. He's already in an overall position. Now he's in a knockdown, drag-out battle with his teammate. Uh, and it's unnecessary. This is where he usually makes mistakes and goes down. He's already in overall position, so just take it easy. Now LaRocco moves his teammate to the outside, as he did with Jeff Emig just a few laps ago, driving Emig right off the racetrack. Albertine keeps his feet. But LaRocco has third place. And now Albertine comes back with the inside line. Over the jumps he goes, he has third. So that looked a little bit more mellow to me. I mean, I would go for that pass, but the ones before it, it seemed like he was taking too big of a chance. And, uh, you know, anytime you're sitting in an overall position and you're trying to build confidence, you just want to make good decisions out there. You can bet our Rogers keeping his fingers crossed, going, don't make any bad moves. Don't do anything stupid. If you're finally going to win one, don't throw it away. Look at the gap that Albertine has now opened up over Morocco. A little sideways right there. It, it's funny to watch Albertine. He'll do a lot of things good, and then, oh, 
Oh, he comes right off the saddle. Lost the grip with his left hand and was just pitched off the back of the bike in a rush. Well, I was just about to say, you'll, you'll watch him and you'll think everything's looking pretty good and all of a sudden, uh, he's out of shape. His left foot slipped off the foot peg. That's the foot, that's like the downhill ski. You want to weight that peg. Once it slipped off, he was totally out of shape. Watch another look at it. He gets into the berm, everything's looking good. He grabs a handful of throttle way too soon. And the bike is squirted right out from underneath him. There was no way he could hang on to that once he lost that left leg. That's the leg you use to grip the side of the bike. Hold your body up with the bike. He just gassed it too soon. The handlebar took a wrenching on the right front. And of course is the brake. Jeff Emig in second place behind Jeremy McGrath. Well, he'll get a pit board to hear pretty soon uh, as he comes around the next half a lap or so. It's going to tell him Albertine just crashed. Now he's in an overall position uh, if things stay the same way they are. Jeff Emig continues to cruise with McGrath out front, Morocco behind. That's our Honda Field summary. We'll be back for more action from Mount Morris. AMA Motocross is brought to you by the reigning Supercross 125 and 250 outdoor champions, Honda. Come ride with us. Back at High Point Raceway, a Honda is out front, ridden by the reigning national champion, Jeremy McGrath. A disappointing fifth in the first moto, and looked like it was going to be more of the same here in this moto when he drops out of the lead and all the way back to about fourth place. Picked it back up. He's in the lead now, and looks like he's not going to lose too many points here on the day. Taking big jumps over those whoops. That's the Jeremy McGrath we're used to seeing. In complete command, very acrobatic. All in all, a terrific rider. Right now, totally unpressed for the lead. In fact, I don't think we have any particular battles going on right now. The question is, where will everyone finish in the overall? Well, he's just got to keep his fingers crossed that the, the cards fall in the right places and he can pick up the overall win. That'd be uh, just about impossible with Morocco and Emick where they are. Uh, it could, it's, it's just about a three-way tie for the lead, but if things stay the way they are, it looks like Emick may pick it up. Emick, of course, uh, beating LaRocco in this moto, if he can stay there, they'll both have a second and a third, but Emick's better finish in the second moto will break that tie. They'll both only pick up a point on the day of Jeremy McGrath out of his points lead. So for Jeremy, uh, having that bad first moto didn't turn out too bad in the end because he's going to win the second moto and uh, he's only going to lose a point in the championship. So not too bad. When you have a bad day to get away with it like that, uh, then you can smile about it. But he will see his streak of consecutive motos and consecutive overalls broken at six and three, respectively. And interestingly, Jeff Emig is the man who ended his Supercross streak after 13 consecutive overalls. So Emig definitely a problem for Jeremy McGrath. Henry really starting to work on LaRocco now. Real impressed. I'm inspired by what I see from Henry because it looks like uh, in this title he could become a factor. If he starts riding well like this, we've seen him go fast and win. The only thing that frightens me is Bud's Creek is the next round. And that's where uh, his problems began with that back injury. So if he can get through that one safe, it could be a good year for Doug in the outdoors. Well, with no one behind him but a lapped rider, a little twist of the front wheel for the fans, to the checkered flag comes Jeremy McGrath. You heard him say earlier, you have to put together two good motos at Mount Morris. He wasn't able to do it, but he looks back to see if Jeff Emig is second. Emig is, and with it, he takes the overall victory. Let's get down to the winner's circle, Davey Coombs with Jeremy. Big difference between the first moto and the second moto. You were on fire that time. Yeah, first moto, I just wasn't motivated, you know. We get, we've been racing 14 weeks in a row, and... You know, I just went out there and the guys were passing me and I just was kind of letting them. I don't know, I mean, they got by me and I didn't do nothing about it, but second moto, I wanted to go away with, you know, knowing that, uh, you know, I still have the confidence and I'm out there and my bike's working good before we go on the two-week break. Yeah, well, you said last year that whenever you won the second moto here at High Point, it was kind of your breakthrough win as far as the 250 class goes, even though you had won an overall before that. But now you really don't need that kind of momentum going when you get the win here at High Point in the second moto. How do you feel about the rest of the series now? Well, I've been tough throughout the first three races, and uh, Mount Morris, I struggled a little bit first moto, but I love it here, you know. I'm happy to take the second moto win and uh, not lose too many points to throw. And vacation time? It's time. Past time for some of these riders, one of whom said, I don't want to see another motorcycle for eight days. For Jeff Emig, the overall victory, Davey's with him. You were right after the first moto. It's always lopsided here at High Point. Yeah, that it is. Uh, 
you know, me and McGrath and, and uh, LaRocco, we had a good, you know, real good race. As people you can see, you know, LaRocco gave me a little love tap there. And, uh, you know, but, and I was kind of like a wake-up call. And I, I know that I rode a lot harder after after they passed me. I was riding a little bit of conservative, you know, at first. And, uh, and uh, you know, I got to see uh, some of their lines that they were taking that were, you know, that were definitely faster than what I uh, was taking at the beginning. High Point's really the kickoff for the rest of the summer and the rest of the Outdoor National Series. You've got eight races to go, or maybe nine. How do you feel about the title now that you've beaten McGrath straight up? Well, you know, he's riding real strong. You know, there's nothing, you know, you can't take nothing away from him there. But, um, you know, we got the Kawasaki working good. And, you know, and everything else is starting to come together. And, uh, you know, we get a little break after this, but then I'll be back, you know, riding real hard in the, you know, at the end of the series because I definitely would like to win this, this uh, 250 National Championship. Congratulations on today's win. Yeah, thanks. I'd like to thank all the fans and stuff and uh, Thor Racing, Scott Goggles, Showy Helmets, Alpine Star Boots, um, Arnett Sunglasses, um, S&P Clothes, you know, and all of the other uh, sponsors, you know, Bridgestone Tires, those guys are doing a great job for us. Yeah, what about your mechanic? Oh, yeah, I'm thinking too. This is uh, J-Bone. He's the best. All right, Jeff Emick avoiding a finish line faux pas there. Here's a look at the standings after four events. Jeremy McGrath leaves the championship handily over Jeff Emick with a long summer of racing still to come. Final thoughts on the day, David? Well, I'm excited to see how good LaRocco is starting to ride. He's becoming a threat for the title. Also, Greg Albertine picking up that moto win. He, he made a mistake in the second moto. I think he'll learn from that. And then inspired by Doug Henry. He's consistent here today. He was fast, starting to ride like he was before he got hurt. And that's good news for the rest of this series. And we'll be following the series all the way to the season finale. We hope you'll be with us. Our next stop will be...